Welcome to the third video in the Technical Tecton series. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the entry point, which is a component that makes up part of the implementation of task runs. What makes the entry point interesting is that it's something of a giant hack, but it's quite a clever hack that's used to implement a strategy of execution that isn't normally supported by a Kubernetes pod. We'll talk about how steps inside of a task get sequenced so that they happen one after the other. Um, and to do that, we will write an example and then explore the pod that gets created when we submit that example to the controller. And finally, we'll talk a bit more in depth about how the entry point is used to sequence steps. So just to kick things off here, I'm gonna start with a, another example task run just the same as the first video on editing task run YAMLs. I won't talk too in depth about what I'm doing here. Suffice to say, this is the typical task run YAML file preamble. Now, one thing I am gonna do here is instead of writing a separate task YAML file, I'm actually just gonna embed the task spec directly in this task run. And all this simply is doing is skipping the step where we need a separate YAML file for the task. Um, the task run can just embed the spec directly. This isn't that great for reusability because you can't reuse the task in other task runs or in pipelines, but it's great for examples because it's quicker to write just one file than two. So for the purposes of this example, I'm gonna introduce three steps to our task. And in each step, I'm just gonna echo a message. Hello from step one, hello from step two, hello from step three. All right, I'll just save that and uh, quit. And now I'm going to apply this task run. The task run will go through its normal order of execution, but I'm actually just gonna skip ahead to when it's finished. Okay, let's take a look at this completed pod. All right, so scrolling through all of the extra YAML that Kubernetes adds. Okay, here we're looking at the containers inside of the pod. Remember that when we run a task run, each step in our task is converted into a container inside of the task runs pod. Here we can see the first steps container. Remember that in our first step, we had a script block that echoed a message, hello from step one. But that's not what we see here. Instead, what we see is this command, tecton tools entry point. We can also see a number of arguments that are being passed to that command. And of particular interest is this final argument. Um, passed to the entry point flag, it's the name of a script with a seemingly random string at the end of its name. And then scrolling down, we see this same pattern repeated for the other steps. So for step two's container, we can see a command of tecton tools entry point, and we can see a bunch of arguments, the last one of which is again, a script with a random string at the end. And finally, if we scroll down and look at step three's container, we see the same pattern repeated. So far then, we've determined that when you define a step, Tecton is rewriting those steps into containers with some alteration to the command and the arguments passed in. So let's dig into that a little bit more and try and illustrate what's happening. So when a task run is submitted, Tecton gets the task referred to by the task run and then combines those two objects together and starts building out this pod. Now, we might expect ordinarily the command written inside of the step to be directly converted into a command inside of the task run container, but that's not what happens. Kubernetes itself introduces a wrinkle to this design because when you launch a pod in Kubernetes, all of the containers start up and run at the same time. There's no way to tell the containers that they should happen or execute one after the other. Tecton wants to sequence these steps, remember, one after the other. And so we need to introduce a mechanism here to make sure that step two's command does not run until step one's command has completed. In support of this requirement, Tecton introduces a shared volume that is shared across all of the containers inside of task runs pod. Hold on to that information for a second because we'll come back to it in a moment. 
So to illustrate this, let's look at a very simple example. Let's say step one's command is simply to echo a string, the string foo. What Tekton does is it wraps that command in its own binary called the entry point. And when I say it wraps it, I simply mean that the container is told to first execute the entry point. And the entry point then has the responsibility of delegating to or calling the command you originally defined for your step. In this case, echo foo. Now remember, there's shared storage that all containers have access to. So using the shared storage, we now have a way to sequence these containers because the entry points, one wrapping the command of each step, can look at, monitor this storage and use files on that volume, on that storage, to communicate their readiness and their completedness to each other. Perhaps that explanation is a tad abstract, so let's see how this plays out. The first command, echo foo, is wrapped by the entry point, and the entry point waits for the command to finish, and when it does finish, it writes a file onto the shared storage. The second step's entry point is waiting for that file, and when it sees that file, it too runs its command. Finally, when the second step's container completes, it writes a file to storage, and the third step's container, likewise watching for changes in files, sees that update from step two, and finally can run its own command. And so in this way, we've now sequenced the steps, even though all of the containers ostensibly started at the same time. Okay, let's go back to the YAML that we were looking at earlier from our pod and see if we can work backwards from this explanation to the command and arguments that we see there. Looking at these arguments, we can see a wait file, a post file, and a termination path. Now we just want to focus on the post file first of all. This argument specifies the file that the entry point will write when it's done, when the command that it has delegated to has finished. So that file's name is Tekton Tools 0 in this case. Now as we scroll down to the second steps container, we can see the wait file argument accepts the same file name that the previous steps container used as its post file argument. And that's the final piece of the puzzle. The first entry point writes the file to this location. The second entry point waits for it. Once the second command is finished, the second entry point will likewise write a file to a fixed location that the third entry point is waiting for. And at the very end, the last entry point will run its command and the command will exit, the entry point will write a file, and then the entry point will exit. All of the containers will be in a done state, and the pod will therefore be done, and ultimately the task run will be in a completed state. Okay, that's it for this session on the entry point. Thanks very much for watching.